Jeremy, and I'm a product specialist at Abstract. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to properly set the color space for an element image input in an element graph. Now, if you haven't already, I'd recommend watching our video on how to create element image graph inputs, which allows you to not only input solid color information, but also images as well using the same input. Now, if you'd like to watch that video, there's a link in the description below. Now, let's dive into Instant Matte Studio and get started. So here we are in an element graph in Instamat Studio, and you can see I have an element image input here with this colorful Instamat icon. And so what I want to do is show you how you can manipulate the properties of a graph input using a panel called the Graph Variable Editor. We can find the Graph Variable Editor by clicking on this icon here in the top right. You can access this by pressing Shift 2. You can also press Shift 1 to switch between the Graph Object Editor and Shift 2 for the Graph Variable Editor. Pretty handy to switch between those panels. So now that we have this element image input selected, we can now edit its properties in the graph variable editor. And the property that I want to focus on in this video is the color space parameter. Now you can see that it's automatically selecting sRGB, but sometimes we need to explicitly set the color space for our graph input. So I can click this drop down and you can see I can choose between sRGB and linear. So if I choose linear here, you can see that we add this linear flag to the bottom of this graph input. And now this image input is now working in linear color space. So next, I want to show some examples of when we want to explicitly set our color space to linear for our element image or element image gray inputs. So the first one I want to talk about here is working with grayscale information. Now, most times when you're working with grayscale information, you're going to want that all that information, that linear zero to one data. So if you're working with the roughness channel or you're building height information or you're creating shapes or masks, you know, uh, you're bringing in a grunge, for example, that you want to add to your material, you're going to want to work with linear color space here. And that goes also for normal maps. So let's say you have a normal decal that you'd like to combine with other normal information. For example, all normal information should be working in linear color space as well. So next up, I want to talk about bringing in your own custom environment maps. So you can see I have a, uh, an HDRI uh, environment map that's being plugged into this mesh render node where I can do a nice visualization of my stone covered soil material here. Now, when you're working and bringing in your own environment maps, those also need to be interpreted with linear color space. So I just want to show you an example here. If I change this to an sRGB color space, you can see that our lighting looks completely different and it's not reacting the way that it should. So when working with environment maps and plugging those into the mesh render node, for example, you want to make sure that's in linear color space. Now, the last thing I want to talk about in terms of linear color space is working with masks and maps like the Mesh ID map. So you can see here I have this Mesh ID map, and this is commonly useful for being able to select and isolate different parts of a mesh based on these particular colors. And an input like this also needs to be in linear color space because we really need to make sure that we select the proper color. We have the proper color information that we need to generate this mask. So when you're creating masks and using maps like this, you want to make sure that that's also working in linear color space. Now, next, I quickly want to talk about when we use sRGB color space. And the rule of thumb is when you're working with the base color channel, either for a material or when texturing an asset, whenever you're working with this color information for the base color, you want to work in sRGB color space. So you can see, for example, here we have this decal and we have this, uh, this background here, and I'm using the mesh decal node to project this warning decal onto this cube. And so because we're using the base color channel here and we're just working with color information for that base color, uh, we can use sRGB color space for these inputs, as you can see here. So you can see how it's important to set the color space of your element image and element image gray graph inputs based on the particular use case for that image data. Now, one last thing before we go here, I want to mention how Instamat is able to automatically infer the color space for a graph input or a local variable using this auto setting here. So if you set the color space to auto, Instamat's going to determine the color space based on the semantics, based on the naming convention that we use here for the input itself. So you can see this in action. If I change this from image to normal, 
Notice how we get that linear flag here. And now this graph input is now going to be in linear color space because it knows that uh, a normal map is commonly processed in linear color space. And the same thing goes for other maps too. Like we mentioned before, I have this one called mesh ID and it's automatically set it to linear as well. So when we set this color space option to auto, when you set the name of the input to a map that is commonly in linear color space, Instamat will recognize this and set the color space accordingly. Thanks for watching this video on setting the proper color space for an element image graph input. Now, if you'd like to learn more about working with nodes in Instamat Studio, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Here you'll find an ever expanding library of videos covering the ins and outs of Instamat. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, drop us a comment below, and don't forget to subscribe. For the latest news about Instamat, please visit our website and follow us on Twitter. You can find all the links in the video description below. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next one.